Oh, I thought you were going to say um, with the study abroad that you regret checking a bag only full of shoes. You know. Um, Is that on there? No. Oh, but that's okay. Kind of. I. Yeah, I. I kind of wish that I hadn't done that. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Kat. I'm Chris. And this is episode number 182. And we just did a lot of spring cleaning for August. It feels good to sit, doesn't it? It does feel good to sit. We, I feel like we've been going nonstop since I opened my eyes today. At 9.30 in the morning. Yeah, uh, goodness. <laughs> I, I was going to say, when I left when I left for a run this morning, you were still asleep. I think I was up. I was just on my phone. Like, dude, you know, you got to do your French and you got to, you know, Wordle and all that stuff. What did you get on Wordle today? I got on the second try. I did too. Yeah. One of my friends who does it, um, he also got it on the second try. Yeah, well. What is your start word in Wordle? Uh, Do you use the same one every time? Yes, tears. Tears. Yes. Okay. Because, you know, S-T-E, like basically it uses all the words that are very common. So like even if you don't get the word, you get like a lot of the letters usually. And then my second word, if it's not, just skip over this if you're a wordle person. My second word, if none of the word letters and tears work, is like mound. Okay. Um, cause then you have the O's and the U's and the M and N, which are also pretty like popular. Okay. And usually from there I can kind of like get it. There was one time where I did both those words and none of them worked. Mm. No letters. And I was like, what is happening here? Like what is next? <laughs> yeah. So I always start with ideal. Okay. Because I get so A, E and I, mm-hmm. and then I have a similar second word. Um, it is mount. Yeah. 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 Is yours mound? Oh, mound, yeah, because, because you have I tears. Use tears. Yeah. 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 I like Wordle. And you know what? I will get it and then immediately forget it. So I couldn't even tell you. Do you remember you. what today's was? Uh, Actually, it's this is so bad. I should, but I complete, I've already forgotten it. Treat. Oh, yeah. 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 It makes sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Um, What is your streak at? Um, there was a, I think last week I got one wrong <gasps> where I didn't get any of it no. because it was one of those words where it's like, there's different types to spell it. Like I had like three of the letters. Was it when it was poker? Um, Because no. that could have been like Joker or. Uh, no, it was a different one. Okay. It was like, I don't know, but there was, I had like, I got like m- most of the letters within like the second or third try, but then I was like, oh, it could be this, 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 or this. Yeah. It would be like catch, hatch, patch. The, what was that first those. word? Catch. Oh. Hatch. Patch. Oh, like catch. Latch. Like all of that stuff. So I think it was like one of those where I just like completely got it wrong because I had like, there were so many options, the different types of words, and I yeah. chose the wrong, th- like several. <laughs> so this is, I'm at, um, I'm in like the 70s. And I should be well over 100, but there was something going on with my phone and, like, the web browser. Mm -hmm. And I had to reset it and, like, delete all my history and all of that, like, like, delete the app, all of that, and bring it back. And it set me at zero. That's a shame. It is a shame. And this is, like, this is a weird fear. Not a fear, but, like, well, a fear. It keeps me up at night. Um, are you going to keep doing Wordle while we're yes. like on our trip? Yeah, mm-hmm. that and Duolingo. I was just going to say that yeah. I am a huge like habit person. You know that I have that app where I like to make sure that like I do certain things every day. You're an app guy. I am not an app guy. Yes, you are. You, you have me? far more apps you on your have, phone than I, I have do. I like a ton of travel apps, but you, which we should totally do a podcast episode about all of my many, 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 many travel apps. That's a good that idea. I just have in my phone. But, um, no, like, I feel like you, you have like, you have an app for like water tracking, your habits app. Like, I feel like you like to cross it off on your phone 
And then I love crossing it off on like my planner, my to-do list. Do you write down your habits every day in your planner? No. Well then. Because I just know I just do them first thing. Otherwise I'll forget. So that's uh, why that's how I do it. And then I also like my to-do list is always written down. Oh, see, I, I put just, like, everything put in, my in my phone. Yeah, I and, like to like yeah. scratch it out physically. <laughs> all right. I've been that way since college when I would like get a planner every year and like write down all my assignments and then scratch them out. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, What was your highlight from this past week? Um, I mean, I've got some exciting things coming in 2023. Like uh, we just heard back from a safari company that we're going to be working with in 2023. That's very exciting. And we're still going back and forth on stuff, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so that's exciting. And then, yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice to have our closets cleaned, even though it took a long time. And um, you judged the amount of clothing that I had in my closet. Closets. Yeah. Well, plural. I mean, I have one and a half closets. Chris has half a closet. I wasn't judging the amount of clothing because I get it that like, Generally speaking, you are going to have more clothing than I am, right? Well, I'm just not like a huge than yeah. like what men have. I'm you know? also just not like a huge like I have had the same style for quite a while now, mm-hmm. um, and like that is my style. Um, it doesn't it doesn't bother me like the amount that you have because I get it, and like quite frankly, when we were going through everything today, like I was like, oh yeah, like I can think within the past however many months when you've worn it it's not like you have stuff that you never wear well and I have a couple things key pieces that I'm like it goes in and out of fashion and so I never like to get rid of it because I'm like well I don't want to buy all new stuff when it comes back in style because goes out of fashion in whose world just like in general like I'm gonna keep my skinny jeans for now TikTok teens no like I have a pair of like normal Gen Z type jeans and then I have like my skinny jeans and I will not get rid of them because uh winter time tucking them into boots and also hold on like I like I'm gonna wear them and like they're gonna come back in style one day like they just will I have so many questions (laughs) first of all it, it's not frustrating the amount of clothes you have, but I'm like, goodness, like, there's not a lot of space between them. Okay. Um, but. That's because our closets are small. No, they are not. I just. Says the guy with half a closet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Um, no, the, like, I mean, what who who decides styles now? Is it the teenagers on TikTok? I mean, I feel like it's always the younger people dictating fashion. Oh, goodness. You know, that's always how it's been. Like yeah. millennials were the skinny jeans and, you know, the different shirts and things that were, that's you know, fair. I know the high you waisted because we were scarred by the low rise jeans of the early 2000s and like people that were a normal, healthy size being called like fat on TV. Were those the whale tail days? Oh my gosh. Yes. And it's coming back like the super low rise pants. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Whale tails are coming back? No, not oh, whale tails. Oh. Gosh, I hope not. Like gross. But like, <laughs> like the, um, and if you guys don't know, the whale tail was pen- essentially where like it, your pants were so low rise and thongs were such a like the underwear thongs, not how like a lot of non-Americans talk, say they're flip flops because those are also called thongs. Um, That'd um, be you, a sight. You had such low rise pants that or jeans or trousers or whatever um, that when you sat down, your thong, which would be this uh, like upside down triangle, would be showing. And it happened all the time in grade school and like in high school and stuff. And it was like terrible and not a, not a good look. Um, but yeah, like nobody pulls off. Like you have to be like a model to be able to pull off low rise pants, like jeans. You have to be really small. <laughs> like Fair enough. I just hope that doesn't come back. Like that was just traumatizing the first go around. Goodness. <laughs> um. So you talked about your highlight. That is really exciting. I'm very, very happy for you. And I'm very proud Thanks. of you. And I'm sure we will talk all about it on the podcast. Yeah. Um, my highlight from this past week was my fantasy football draft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There is a group of eight of us. We have had this league forever. Um, eight is a smaller number for the league. Um, but it's a whole bunch of us that have been friends since high school. 
Mm -hmm. um, and in many cases, even longer than that. So it's uh, it's always good to see everyone and uh, and catch up, um, even like over Zoom like we did while we were drafting, um, since we're all kind of spread out now. Um, but yeah, that was pretty neat. Are you ready to dive in? Let's dive in. All right. So this past week, students started returning to school. And that same group of friends that I just mentioned, all of us were talking about what we would have done differently in our college or university years. Okay. And Oof. it really, <laughs> you, right? It really hit us because, um, so like our, our, the, the college that I went to, um, they tweeted out and they were like, it's moving day. And one of my buddies was like, oh my gosh, that was 14 years ago. And I was stop, like, wow. Stop it. Wow. Stop it. That's, uh, yeah, that puts life in perspective, There's right? There's people on TikTok literally being like, oh, you know, the the terrible styles of like the mid-2010s in college. And I was like, I was already out of, like, we, I, we've already graduated and had big people, like, no, like adult jobs at that point. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, so, of course... So like we're we're talking about what we would have done differently, right? And of course hindsight is 2020. Do do you have something that comes to mind right away? If you could make one change in um in your college years, does does something pop pop into your head? Um I feel like I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of it was just like getting older and maturing, but like Yeah. I kind of wish that I focused more like I definitely focused on my studies. I like graduated with like honors and everything but like I I wish that I would have like enjoyed more time with friends and worried less about guys and dating because you know like yeah, most good. of the time like people certainly meet their like spouse in college but like most of the time that doesn't necessarily happen and like you were putting like internal pressure on yourself to conform to that well no um well it didn't help that both my siblings got married like pretty much right out of college and my mom put a lot of pressure on me <laughs> <laughs> um because at 24 she was like you don't want to be an old maid and I'm like oh my gosh I'm 24 years old um and then we met yeah and then we met <laughs> no <laughs> that was very coincidental because I was like I'm fine I, I still remember the first thing you said happy. to me was I'm very worried about becoming an old maid <laughs> and I said <laughs> I was like wow that terrifies me and then oh, I didn't want to talk to you and you kept following me and you were like, no, I'm serious. Like, I don't want to do this. That is not how this happened at all. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And now like there's a knife to my back and like, here we are. Will you stop it? Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So I kind of wish I'd focus more on like really enjoying because something I miss the most about college is being so close living wise, either with your friends and Friends being around are, them and getting to see them as much. Because yeah. once we graduated, we all kind of went our separate ways. And I see them as much as I can, but it's not like, you know, yeah, quite as easily as it used to be. That's fair. So I kind of wish I'd focused more on my friends and enjoying that experience of college um, and We're, not about... Being a nerd? Boys. Fair enough. Like caring about guys. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, so hindsight is obviously twenty twenty. But when mm -hmm. my when my buddies and I were talking about this, many of us discussed um, study abroad as an experience that we wish that we had had. Mm -hmm. um, the university that I went to had a uh, had a relationship with a university in Luxembourg, mm -hmm. and um, one of my very close friends actually did the program. And I love absolutely with, loved it with him because we both studied abroad at separate times and different yeah. places, but it's fun to talk about the different experiences we had. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a, a lot of us were talking about that. That was an experience that we wish that we had had. So that got me thinking hindsight being 2020, what would I have done differently in our travels or in my travels in the past? And that is, uh, that is what we are going to chat about today. Um, I have five, I think you also have five. I do. Any honorable mentions? Um, I don't actually. It was hard to come up with like five, five. Most of mine are before we even traveled you, together. Oh, wow. All yeah. of mine involve your presence. Oh, wonderful. Um, just kidding. <laughs> um, why don't you go ahead and kick it off? All right. My first one is it relates to studying abroad. You know, I was 21 years old. I was all excited. My first time traveling outside of kind of North America, away from family, that sort of thing. Um, but not really 
researching and appreciating the area I lived at in France. While I was there, before I went, um, I went to a place called Grenoble, France, which was in the southeast in the Alps, uh, closer to Switzerland. Did you have something you want to say? Oh, I thought you were going to say um, with the study abroad that you regret checking a bag only full of shoes. You know. Um, Is that on there? No. Oh, but that's okay. Kind of, I, yeah, I, I kind of wish that I hadn't done that. That um, plays into the research aspect. Yeah, though. a research aspect. Um, I did not realize at the time that like high heels were like probably not your best idea for cobblestone streets so i literally had two checked bags this was about five months where i lived there so i had two checked bags a carry-on and a computer bag which is my personal bag it was so heavy dragging that first of all i'd collect it all once i got to paris then take a train from paris down to grenoble then leave the train station and carry it all with me can you give us a visual here how many bags did you have four checked size or back two checked one carry-on and a and a um like laptop bag good you should have seen and like one of the bags was mostly heels and i was wow. like why did i do that it was like mostly shoes and i was like i don't know why i did this they were both like 50 pounds each like they were basically at the limit 50 pounds of shoes just i mean there was a lot I, there was other stuff too i like brought like a bunch of stuff forgetting that Oh, hey, like France has their own products that are really great. But I, d- I because I didn't research, I was like, oh, I got to bring my shampoos. I got to bring all this stuff like, you know, everything. Yeah, yeah. And so I brought all this stuff. My roommate, who also went to the same school as me, we were the only two people from the University of Kentucky that were studying abroad there that semester. And she had one checked bag, one carry on, which is much more reasonable for like before a uh, five month stint abroad um but like the area I stayed at was so lovely like I liked Grenoble but the whole area was gorgeous I wish I had appreciated that um there's the Savoie wine region there's lots of great hiking um I did learn to ski there I went skiing there that is an experience I'm really glad I did because that was so popular there and a lot of people in Grenoble would ski on the weekends um But, you know, hiking once it got warmer, um, exploring just the Alps in general in that area, the lakes. Uh, I lived not that far from Geneva, Switzerland, and I never spent any time in Geneva, Switzerland. So I never got to go to Switzerland, even though it was not that far away from where I was in France. Um, Isn't that funny, though? Yeah, I flew in and out of the airport. Yeah. But I never explored Geneva. Well, it's it's also kind of similar to you you always not you personally but I know that I will always like look further from home when there's a lot of fantastic stuff like in your own backyard to use the phrase yeah that's very true yeah yeah I mean I feel like yeah, I, I mean, and, and when I was in Grenoble, aside from studying and stuff during the week and hanging out and like going to class and stuff, I feel like on the weekends I was either traveling somewhere new, which I mean, that's part of the experience here in Europe. You know, it's my first time I'd ever been there. So, of course, I wanted to see and do a lot with the discount airlines. How many countries did you visit in Europe while you were studying abroad? Oh, gosh. I think, may, I think between 10 to 14. I can't that remember off impressive. the top of my head. That's really impressive. Yeah, like I, I went to a lot of places and I explored like parts of France as well. Um, but yeah, if I wasn't traveling other places, I was mostly like partying slash hungover from partying and sleeping until like two in the afternoon because I was 21 years old. Um, I don't know. Like, again, that's just part of growing up and maturing. Were you hungover because of excess alcohol consumption? Yes, I was. We would go to these clubs. Wow. Okay, first of all, I found out that it's not called pre gaming, it's pre drinks there. That's what all of our um, European, like Erasmus students, told us. And um, someone would host it. Like, there was a couple guys that had their own apartment somewhere and they were there for the full year for study abroad. And, like, they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to meet for pre drinks at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And we're like, usually we're going out to the bars at that point. Do you point. remember the days? Yeah. And so, like, Kirsten and I, my friend, would like, we would buy like a little bit of wine, sweet wine. And um, so we're like drinking some wine. And um, before we go to the pre drinks, then we go to the pre drinks. And then we don't even get out to the like club until like two in the morning. And then we catch the sunrise on the way home, taking the tram home. And 
I just don't know how I do it. I did it <laughs> now as like a 30 year, 30 something year old woman. Um, so the regret is going in blind. The, yeah. Like I did no research. I didn't like appreciate the fact that there were all these great like Alpine lakes and great hiking and like really cool things to see and do in the area just outside of where I was staying. Yeah. And even the chance to go to Switzerland, which was right there, I didn't take that at all because I would either be too hungover or because we were like, oh, yeah, we'll make it there. We'll make it there. It's so close. And then we never did it. Yeah. Um, Tomorrow's always there. Right. And then, yeah, I also wish I'd focus more on traveling and self-discovery versus boys. I don't know. That was a theme for me. I don't know why I was like, felt like I needed a boyfriend or needed to date. But <laughs> there you go. I'm glad that like. I eventually grew out of that. And then we met when I was kind of like, oh, I'm happy as is. And I'm just going to travel and do my thing. And then I met you at a party. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time I was like, oh my gosh, boys. And uh, yeah. So it was that it was that old maid threat. That old maid threat. <laughs> it must have been. Fair but enough. that was my, that's my number one, which seems like a lot. But just the whole like not research. I'll be honest. It was a lot. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> what was your first I mean, one? unsurprisingly, I have a few here that also I could probably lump into the category of like not enough research. Yeah. Um, the first one is in 2019 and I regret not doing more restaurant research slash reservations in both Lima and Paris. Now we were only in Lima for one night and we, ate very, very well that night. Um, it was actually like a really cool spot that we went to, uh, Mercado yeah, I 28. I liked to. where we yeah. went, but, um, and I also, I mean, really enjoyed where we ate in Paris, but these are two incredible, incredible cities for food. Like people will travel from across the world to go and eat in these cities because of some of the chefs that they have in these cities. Mm -hmm. um, and... It would have been nice to do some prior planning. That is one thing that I think that we have really gotten in like a good groove with is when we were going to Italy, we had reservations for most nights. No, it was about half the time. Well, half Because I didn't want yeah. us to feel like constrained that we had to like... That's true. ...do certain meals at certain times and like miss out on something. I, yeah. I agree with that. But I think that it's also like you can look at where you really, really want to go and make a reservation or plan your day almost around a meal as opposed to something else, mm -hmm. which um, which is fantastic. Um, like I said, we, we ate great. We drank great in both Lima and Paris, but it would have been nice to maybe do a little bit more advanced, probably planning, not as much as research because we did research for both, but we didn't do reservations because we were like, oh, well, like, I mean, what if we want to go like to a wine bar or to a brewery or what have you? And, and then, there was a couple places that we couldn't get into, exactly. especially in Paris because we didn't get the reservations. The for wine it. bar that we wanted to go to, we Les could Juvenel. not, yes, we could not get in both because we did not I make a reservation. Both places I got into. Uh, my trip to Paris last year. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> the places we wanted to go to because I had heard amazing things and made reservations ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. So the lesson is um, make a reservation or two for something that you really want to do. Mm -hmm. My next one is, again, with not researching. Uh, we have changed and grown a lot over the years when it comes to travel. But uh, back in my backpacking days, uh, whether it was both with my best friend and also when I did a solo backpacking trip through Europe after I graduated, I did no research. I was just like, I want to go to these places that I haven't been to in Europe based on the what I had heard when I was in Europe. And all I booked were transportation to get there and... Um, hotel or hostels because I had only stayed in hostels at that point in Europe. Um, and I guess it was very spontaneous and it was great because I could do things like attend a beer festival in Prague, which was so much fun or, uh, meet a lot of friends along the way because, you know, we do the free hostel walking tour or something like that. Um, but there were also some things that we missed out on because we couldn't book it in, because I didn't book it in advance, like some day trip ideas and different things like that, because I had done zero research for cities I went to and couldn't book it. Um, or even just researching um, different cities. I mean, I know for a little bit, like Graham and I couldn't decide between, we didn't have time to see both like Krakow and Warsaw in Poland. 
And I don't know how we decided on Warsaw, which it was great and we had a good time. But like, I almost feel like I would have chose Krakow now because Warsaw was practically flattened during the war, um, rebuilt, which was interesting. But I feel like Krakow has a lot more history and like other things to explore. So that would have been um, kind of nice to maybe explore that area instead or even a different area of Poland, like Gdansk or something cool like that. So um you know, we didn't really do a lot of research. We were just like, oh, we want to hit up these countries. What are the bigger cities in these countries? And then we did that. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that would have been good to maybe research beforehand. And that could have changed our trip um, for some of the places that we went to. But I still had a great time and I'm glad we went to the places we did. But, yeah, it would have been nice to, to maybe to maybe research a little bit more before I left. I think research is going to be a common theme Yeah. Um, in this podcast. My number two... I will say that it is between the years of 2000, I will say, let me think. I'll say 2011 to 2015, okay? And that is not doing a solo trip, um, like during the summer or what have you. This is something that we kind of talked about last episode, the fact that I never just did that and you can still do it oh yeah 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 absolutely but like it would have been easier back in let's say college years right um but the reasoning is like i just never had that calling really to do it like i if if you would have asked me when i was 20 or 21 or what have you um like if i ever thought about just going to europe by myself for like two weeks or something like that um, the answer would have been no, right? Like yeah. I was very like one track mindset. Um, I I went back, like I would I would go to school during the year. I would work during the summer. And um, that was just like, it's, it's almost like a you throw it, you know, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was very comfortable in that. Um, I took two years of Japanese in college and there were, there were students in my, um, in my class that after our first year, went over to Japan with one of our professors for like two or three weeks well, do you in think the your summer parents would have let you. Yeah, absolutely. But it, oh, it was, cool. yeah, it was more so of a like, Oh, well, like I'm working at this place and like, I want to show my dedication to work so that they know yeah. that like, it's very important to me so that I can get a job in the future. But I could see them feeling very like, that's a really well-rounded thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Like to have some sort of international experience as you get hired on. Because I know that was a really like a feather in my cap when I was applying for internships, being like, oh, I've studied abroad. I speak sure. French, all that stuff. Yeah. And it was it was more so like me with a one track mindset yeah. than anything else. But um, that yeah, that is something where I'm like, man, I had like what a good two or three months every summer mm -hmm. during my college or university years that even going for two weeks or something like that would have been probably a pretty cool experience and probably also would have given me a greater appreciation in those classes mm -hmm. for the following year. Yeah. Right. It wasn't just something that I was learning here stateside. It was something that I could apply during my travels and then kind of grow from there. So that is a, uh, that is a regret of mine. So I, um, I had something kind of similar. I n didn't end up doing that because my parents, they would never, the only reason like, the reason why I chose like, so the University of Kentucky had a program called Global Scholars in their business school that essentially it was a business honors program, but it made you study abroad. And I applied to that knowing that, and it had to be a full semester. I applied to that because I did not think my parents were going to let me study abroad unless if it was part of something I had to do. That's fair. Yeah. And I mean, I knew I wanted to do international business, so I knew that it was like a thing that would be good for that, but... Yeah, like that kind of was like a way to get them to be like, oh, well, if I have to do it. Um, but there was a class that I took freshman year called um, Vietnam and Interplay of War and Culture. And it talked about the 1960s and what was going on in the United States and what was going on in Vietnam and the Vietnam War and all of those things. And it was so interesting. Um, and the guy who the professor who taught it, I think every other year he would lead over Christmas break for like a week or, or a couple of weeks would go to Vietnam and show you like it would be part of your class or something that you could do if you wanted to. But my parents were never going to let me do it. And, and it was like, you know, it was kind of expensive to get out there and stuff. Sure. So I get it. 
Um, so we went on our honeymoon. So I, well, yeah, I was fascinated by Vietnam after that class and I wanted to learn more. So, you know, that's why I wanted to go during our honeymoon. Yeah. Vietnam was sweet. It was amazing. I want to go back. What is your third one? (laughs) Uh, My third one is while I was studying abroad, we went to Spain for a week and we went to Sevilla, you know, Seville in Spain. And we, there was a day trip option from our hostel to do the Alhambra and I was just kind of going along with the group because there was about nine of us that went and nobody else was really doing it. I kind of wish I had just done it anyway because I really wanted to see that. Did you day drink instead of going to the Alhambra? No, we did explore a lot of... I'm Not really. We explored a lot of like Sevilla and stuff too. Um, We didn't really day drink. We mostly drank like at night. Like, And it was cool because that was a neat city. Um, Oh, yeah. You know, we did like a paella. Like we learned about paella and how that's made and... You know, how um, flamenco dancing, we did a flamenco dancing excursion and all of that stuff. Um, But yeah, I really wish that I was just like, you know what, guys, I'll meet you up later. But I had the FOMO and all of that stuff then um, because I really wish I had seen it because I the architecture is amazing. It's really, really cool. Um, Yeah, I just that would have been neat to see. And then also as someone who like has studied a lot of like Tudor history and all of that stuff. That is where Catherine of Aragon lived for a time uh, when she wasn't out with her parents on like different like things. Um, I don't know. And I read about it in like a book at some point and I was just like, this is a really cool place. It looks like architecturally gorgeous. Um, it was from the Moors who built it. Uh, it would be a really cool place to see. And we were so close and we didn't. And I'm, I'm so sad that I just wasn't like, hey guys, I'm going to peace out on this day trip. I'll meet up with you later. That would have been cool to see. Yeah. But I just kind of went mean. along with the group, which was fine. So it's that group mindset. Got it. We got to get to, we got to get to Spain so I can go see the Alhambra. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, my third one was in 2018, and I wrote down phoning it in in Bangkok. Um, That's so true. This was during our honeymoon. It was a long trip. This was the longest trip that I had ever taken. It was three weeks. And it was the end of the trip. It was the very end yeah. of the trip. Um, it was a terrible end to an otherwise amazing trip. I mean, it wasn't um, terrible. Well, yeah, yeah. it was. Okay. Um all, all we knew is that we wanted to see Watfa mm-hmm. and the Grand Palace. The Grand Palace was closed. Legitimately. Not yeah, the scam there part. There is a so, scam, but it was a holiday. Yes. <laughs> we did go to Watfo. That was really, really cool. Um, we ended up just kind of like aimlessly walking around the city. Um, we went to this like weird indoor multi-story mall. Mm-hmm. Um Mostly just for the air conditioning, but yeah, yeah, and like it was. We we also had this. Um, we we had plans. Like we had the self guided food tour one night, which did not translate well. Complete dud. We ended up dipping out after like two of the yeah. six or seven stops. Just so the company we had gone through for it. Just I don't think they communicated it well to people. Yeah. And like they were like, "Why aren't you paying for this?" And I'm like, "Well, we we already did." Very it's uncomfortable. Part of this thing, and it just was weird. Yeah. Yeah. And Do like, not recommend like a do it yourself food tour through a company. Like, yeah. Just just go with a guide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But it was it was just kind of weird. We actually ended up having a very nice evening. We went to a brewery mm-hmm. that had good food. It had good beer. It was a really cool atmosphere. It was like outside astroturfed. Like mm-hmm. it was it was neat. Um, and our hotel was nice. Our I hotel liked the was rooftop. gorgeous. Yeah, there's a rooftop pool. But I wish that we had kind of either ended the trip right after our beach time in Colipe, or done a little bit more planning for what was going on in Bangkok. And like I said, I mean, research is going to come up time and time again in this podcast, but um, yeah, like it just sucked that a lot of it was beyond our control too. Um, That, that kind of dampened what had it. Like, I well, think that it yeah. would have been great if, I, I think I would have totally flipped the script on Bangkok if we had actually signed up for a food tour as opposed to the self-guided and then, um, and our hotel offered all of these cool tours, like the floating markets tour. Yeah. And I honestly wish that we had signed up for something like that and had like a local guide, yes. someone who gets it. Cause Bangkok is 
ginormous Huge. flying into it i was like this is the biggest city i've ever seen in my entire life that like, is one of the coolest things about it insane it's so large so it's easy to get lost in the shuffle if you don't really kind of research it but i think helping a, a, just having a local guide would be so helpful as someone who lives there and just gets it yeah um because i feel like bangkok can be very polarizing for a lot of first-time visitors yeah um had one of the best cups of coffee in my life there yeah. Cannot remember Good the cafe sum. name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had we had nice moments there. But yeah. we also, I think we were just kind of also exhausted at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was Thanksgiving um, back here in the U.S. that we were over there. And we were like, oh, mm -hmm. like there were, there were just a lot of factors. But um, I think a little bit more research probably would have helped. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. All right, my next one is in 2019 in Peru. And this was this was more like pick and choose what to do because we like obviously wouldn't be able to do this in a 10-day trip with everything else we wanted to do. But that's not hiking the Inca Trail. That would have been cool to do. Um, the good news is that, I mean, I would love to do that as well still. Yeah. We just got to, uh, I mean, as we get older, we just got to stay fit. That's true. But I think that would have been really cool. Yes, yeah, so this wasn't a big one. I mean, it was just like, I'm glad that we took those extra few days and decided to go to the Amazon rainforest. Um, so we could have built that in. Uh, we got to see Machu Picchu and it was amazing, but it would have been really neat um, doing the full Inca Trail and getting to see all that. So I was thinking about this as well. Mm -hmm. um, it did not make my list, yeah. but I remember both of us seeing Machu Picchu and being like, okay, that is amazing. But it didn't quite have that same awe factor that um, I, I know that we always kind of like compare like architectural wonders. Um, and it did not have the same kind of pizzazz or awe as um, Anchor Wat. Yeah. I think it would if we had to hike. Maybe. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I really do. So that is an experience that I am looking forward to uh, to having with you. Okay. Um, my fourth one is both in 2018 and in 2021. Okay. And that is not scuba diving. I have had um, chances to scuba dive. I have snorkeled both of those times. I love snorkeling. Okay, snorkeling, I, I could snorkel all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it. But... I would really like to scuba dive at some point. Um, and I always get a little jealous. I mean, it, especially in Belize, right? Like they have, after like Australia's Great Barrier Reef, they have the second largest reef system in the world. We had amazing snorkeling there. Like absolutely amazing. Giant rays, um, beautiful fish, beautiful coral reefs. And I'm like, man, that was it's still one of the best travel experiences I've ever had. And then those that went scuba diving got back on the boat and they were like, Oh, we saw sea turtles. We saw a shark. And I'm like, Oh man, like it's the, uh, it's once again, like hindsight 2020, except it yeah. really hit right there at some point. Um, I would like to scuba dive. Maybe when we go to Australia, maybe when we maybe. go to Australia, we'll we shall see. see. Okay. My last one. And it's not necessarily in our travels, but it's just in general, kind of. Uh, not starting Worldwide Honeymoon and our travel blog sooner. Um, you know, I used to work in accounting. I worked in the big four. Then I worked in a house at a company. And it took me a long time to convince myself that just because I have a master's degree in a specialized subject, if I still hate it and hated my career... Um, it's okay to change even if, you know, I'm completely doing a 180. And I was also very intimidated by the fact that I, I knew nothing about websites and coding and putting together a website. And I used to dread research projects and writing in school. And then I realized that I actually like writing when it's something I enjoy writing about. And I don't know. I, and while I was studying abroad, I had started a blog and it was one of those blog spot like you know, just my study abroad. And it wasn't great. It was a lot of just like endless storytelling of things that I did. But I feel like if I had kept that up and kept learning that I could have been like, you know, up there with the OG travel bloggers that started at that time. But 
you know, I mean, you live and learn. I'm happy to be where I'm at now. I'm happy of all the places that we've been and and the journey that this blog has taken and the podcast. But yeah, I kind of almost wish I had I had started it sooner and, and instead of doubting myself and you know all of that stuff. Fair enough. Yeah. My last one, and this also plays into the research, um, is in 2017, traveling without a purpose. During our trip to Toronto, I cannot recall for the life of me why we chose to go to Toronto. Because it was only a five-hour car trip away. I honestly... That's literally why we did it. Yes. I honestly think that that is the only reason. Mm -hmm. Um, And neither one of us has good memories of Toronto. And I think that that would have changed if we kind of said, okay, we're going here because of blank. Um, I feel like Toronto didn't get a fair shake from us mm-hmm. and it did not help that they had like torrential downpours and some of the islands that we were going to go to around the area, mm-hmm. um, were, were inaccessible at the time. And it was, yeah, it was just kind of a weird trip looking back on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be honest with you. I had one of the best meals of my life at Honest Weight Mm -hmm. in Toronto. That was so freaking good. And it introduced me to Okonomiyaki, which is this wonderful Japanese pancake that was so, so good. So Honest Weight, when I think of Toronto, I think of Honest Weight and I think of that Harry Potter cocktail bar. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, And those are what I think about. Like I, I do think of like we walked around a park for a day, but again, it was just kind of aimless, right? Like we just went because it was like, oh, it's a five hour drive. But Um, Like we could have done Niagara Falls for like a three hour drive or like five hours can get us in a lot of places. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, again, researching and like understanding why you're going rather than just I've never been and I want to check it off is is always a good idea. Yes. Um, But that that is each of our five. And if I can summarize all of them real quickly, just for lessons. Right. Number one is research, like understand why you're going and then what you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If it's, if it's for food, prioritize it. If it's not for, I mean, if it's for activities, prioritize those, but like know why you're going so that you're going to have a, a good time. And then also, um, easier said than done, but be brave, right? Yeah. Take your time. Um, It, I mean, time is the only thing that you can't buy back, right? Yeah, and yeah, like with the being brave, like just because the whole group didn't want to go to the Alhambra in Spain, I could have still gone. Sure. And just been like, hey, I'll catch you guys later. I don't think anyone would have said anything about it, but right, I just wasn't brave enough because I was like, oh, I got to be with the group, you know, all that stuff because I'm in my early 20s and I don't know any better. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. I wish that I had just been like, you know what, I'll catch you guys later. I really want to go see this place. So this was something that was recently told to me that I think both plays into that as well as the like um, my regret of not doing like a gap summer or or Mm -hmm. trip by myself is that you are familiar with what you're doing. And you think that a lot of other people are like so tuned in to what you're doing when really they're not. Yeah. Like I cannot tell you what probably 99% of people in my life did yesterday that I talk to on a regular basis. Like you're just not that tuned in with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so be brave, right? Your time is your time. And spend it how you wish yeah and hopefully you'll spend some of that time doing some research (laughs) Uh, beforehand you don't need to be researching while you're on the trip that is not the time to research because you want to enjoy it (laughs) but i think that wraps it up it does those are our travel regrets uh let us know do you guys have travel regrets um, what you could relate to or not in our in our podcast episode, you can always reach us on Twitter at WW Honeymoon, Instagram at Worldwide Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. 
Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to worldwidehoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.